Huh? It takes a second to warm up. It's coming. The suspense is killing me. Oh my God! Hi. Good afternoon. Slide, please. My name is Sony. Yay, the blank screen, it beckoned me. Go back one, up one. And now I'm going to do the bit. Good afternoon, my name is Jacob. P is Jackie J. P is Jack, good, hi, my name is Jacob. And this is my TED Talk. It would be my TED Talk if TED Talks didn't have so many arbitrary rules about being invited. We were going to have Alan Rubinstein come and read this, but he's being held without bail for manslaughter, and he wants me to inform you that the charges are only 40% true. But we needn't let that interrupt our fun, so I present to you, next slide please, the history of literature in five, count them, five minutes. Now we start with the origin of writing in general with the Sumerians. The first known story that you can go out and read today is the epic of Gargamesh. Written in 2000, it's almost as old as your mom. There's a wiki page on it. After the fall of the Sumerians at the hands of the Autumnians, Homer Simpson's famous Greek epic poems, the iPad, and the Honda Odyssey were written in the 8th century BC. In the 3rd century BC, the Old Testament was first written by Hebrew in Hebrew, and a few years later was written in Shebrew. Hashtag feminism. They also probably wrote literature in ancient China or some other countries. I don't know, but I know the book had something to do with building a wall. <laughs> Around the same time, Plato wrote Atlantis, a city at the bottom of the ocean and the largest city in Georgia, which as we all know is part of Russia. <laughs> After the fall of Rome, the New Testament was written, a collection of books which detail the life and death of your boy, J.C. No, not that J.C., it's the next J.C. No, it's not that J.C., that's the J.C., the one who helped all those people. Uh, the holy Islamic text, the Quran, was written shortly thereafter, which details the story of another one of your boys, the Prophet Muhammad. Back one slide, you're ahead of me. Don't do that, you're gonna ruin the timing. But back in Europe, not many, not many more books could be written during that period because of the Dark Ages, which were a few years wherein all the light bulbs burned out, so no one could write any more books. But in the mid-1400s, someone figured out how to turn the lights back on, so the Renaissance started. This is when books like Dante's Inferno, starring Tom Hanks, and Felicity Jones, directed by Ron Howard, came out in Italy, though everyone said the first one was better. Plus the works of Will I Am Shakespeare, like Richard II, Henry VI, and Big Macbeth, came out in England. In the early modern period, other countries had books like Spain, which had Don Quixote's, and France, which had Candide, a book about yams. In the 1700s, many other books were written, like the Constitution, which was written by Captain America. In the 1800s, Charles Dick Cheney wrote A Christmas Corolla, and Three Musketeers, written by Alexander Dumbass. Also, Carl's Jr. wrote his Communist Manifesto, which would spark a revolution in fast food, overthrowing the imperialist decadence of Burger King. There's a lot of literature in the 1800s, and I can't possibly get through it all, so I'll just skip through a few slides right now. Here we go. Yeah. At the start of the 1900s, 
Frank L. Baum wrote The Blizzard of Oz, which was about Dorothy going off the crazy train in the crazy rails. Arthur Conan the Barbarian, at about this time, wrote about Benedict Cumberbatch, who hailed from the mythical land of Tumblr. In the 30s, J.R.R. Martin wrote The Land of the Thrones, though most people were disappointed by the ending. Next slide. A decade later, in 1984, Vladimir Putin wrote 1984, as well as Animal Farm, which was an allegory to the communist country of France. After the war with Adolf Hitler, who was president of France, C.S. Lewis wrote Narnia, wherein Harry Potter teamed up with Captain Kirk to use the force to save Princess Diana from an evil dragon, from an evil dragon, Princess Diana from an evil dragon, in France! Oh, we made it! <laughs> Late in the 60s, Kurt Vonnegut, president of Nintendo, released Slaughterhouse-Five, the fifth game in the Slaughterhouse series. The 70s were dominated by horror master Larry King, who wrote scary books like The Adam Family and Goosebumps. Tom Clancy wrote a few books in the 80s, and although he wasn't a great writer, he is known for his uncanny ability to make a video game while being dead. And that brings us to the modern age of literature, where authors like J.K. Rowling, John Green and Chuck Tingle, both of which have far less money than J.K. Rowling, are still making books today, but no one reads books anymore because books are lame. What does the future of literature hold? Many think it's the Kindle, which are like iPads for boring people. <laughs> Disney owns your head. It's in Revelations. I don't know what the future holds, but I know one thing. It's probably not taking place in France. In France! Thank you. I'm Jacob Punxsutawney, standing in for Alan Applebean. This has been a history of literature in five minutes. <laughs>